Welcome to an ALIAS 2021 virtual deep dive session. During this session, we'll be discussing enhancements to the Freeform Blend tool and the Skin tool. So let's get started. Here we've got a sub D model, um, which is nothing more than a surface model. If you're familiar with ALIAS, a sub D is surface data. So Freeform Blend works on any surface data. And what it allows you to do is typically users create two tangent lines, and then they use the freeform blend tool to put a transition in between those. Um, in this case, we've enhanced the tool so that you can now simply pick a surface edge and then use the parameter value of that surface to control where the tangent line is. And this allows you to make very lightweight surfaces. So by using the surface multi-surface blend, freeform blend, I could select on two edges. Now, I'm going to pick this edge and then pick this edge. I'd suggest always picking those in the same order. That way, if you have certain continuity set on one side or the other, you'll always be producing a consistent resulting blend. Okay. So once you've created part of the blend, and I'm just going to turn off my shading for now, you can grab the arrows, and these arrows allow you to adjust the parameter value. Now, one thing to note, until you move these, you have not generated any data. So right now, if you look in the control panel, there is zero object picked. So as soon as I move both of these off the zero line, now I've got a blend surface that's been created. Now, this is nice because if you just pick two edges that were right on top of each other and then did nothing, you basically create a surface that had no length and it really potentially could mess up the file and put poor data in the file. So we don't actually generate the data until you've moved those uh, manipulators away from the edges. So I can move this edge over further. All right. So maybe I get a little bit longer lead in on one side. We can then look at the CV placement and see how the CVs are placed. We could turn on our curvature plots and see what the, the combs look like. And maybe I want to slide my form factor to 0.5 so I can get kind of a nicer lead in to my, to my blend. Okay, now I no longer need the curvature turned on. So I can just hit the next key and move to the next uh, blend. So again, I'm going to pick the left, the left hand surface and then the right hand surface. And now as I slide this, I can just use the intersections function and, um, and make the blend the exact same length. All right, next, same thing. We'll go here, slide that. You can see you get a little X on the screen and as soon as you get close to it, it snaps. And the same thing over here. Now this isn't a radius, there's no radius value here. We're just using the parameter space of these input surfaces to control where that tangent line is. And again, this allows you to keep a very thin, lightweight surface, not a lot of uh, geometry in here. This is simply matching. In this case, I've got explicit control on. I could turn explicit control off and I've got Bezier turned on. but it's just going to do what it needs to do to get enough continuity in here. But typically, if you put explicit control in Bezier, you're going to get pretty clean results. Um, and see, I didn't even have to turn Bezier on, but you're going to typically get pretty clean results because you're using the ISO lines or similar to a patch precision line. So if I showed you that, if I grabbed a surface right here and I went to object edit patch precision um, and I and I raise this up. As you can see, I'm just using a line of that. That's what that's what the tool is using. It's simply using one of these parameter edges to create that blend. So it's pretty nice, really lightweight, and you can you can put some blends in pretty fast. I'm just going to um, query edit this one. That'll bring me back into the tool and I can hit next. And I'm just going to build one more down here. I could build it all the way from front to back. It's not really the point here. I'm going to use F5 to turn my controls all off. That's part of the sub D workflow, by the way. I'm going to grab the sub D and turn these vertices on. And now as I pick a vertex and I move it, my freeform blend will update and follow. All right. 
So some pretty nice enhancements to freeform blend that will allow you to quickly and in a very lightweight manner create blends between any two surfaces in your alias file. Of course, if the surfaces are not continuous, the freeform blend that results from discontinuous um, surfaces along in this direction, not in this direction where I'm putting my blend, but the surfaces that travel along the blend I'm going to make, if those have discontinuities, your freeform blend will have the same discontinuity. All right. So those are some changes to the freeform blend fun function. And now if we go to uh, my skin example here, here we have a quarter panel and a wheel arch. And around most of these wheel arches, people tend to use a skin to build this. Now, I don't know exactly um, what was used to build this. It could have been a skin. It's just called face. It's lost its, its, um, its name from however many times I've demoed with this file. But typically, this face right here, you do not want to be perfectly, perfectly flat. Because it's perfectly flat, it will usually seem hollow. Right, so we want to put a little tension in that surface. In previous versions of Alias, um, we had a crown command and a proportional crown command, but we've enhanced it with a couple unique new features. Now, I'm just going to set my um, shader to paint so that as I create new geometry, it gets put on there. And I'm going to go into this folder and turn some curves on and turn this wheel arch off so that we can rebuild one of these. And I'll go into the surfaces skin command and I'm just going to turn on chain selection so I can pick that guy and his little friend over here. And that creates a, a surface. Now this surface, again, is perfectly flat. It's got no crown whatsoever, it's degree one. And as I add proportional crown, it's going to add a row. So now I can add an amount of crown and we can see right here and turn the curvature on, um, I can see how much crown it has. Now, you don't want, you know, a ton of crown because it's just going to blend into your quarter panel, but a little tension in that surface can be good. But right now what we have is a proportional crown that's equally spaced. Now, in previous versions, we could change that crown shape. So you can, you know, push the crown to the outside or make it more crowned in the center. That was always available, okay? Now, what we've done for uh, this latest version is we've added a crown position value. So as I slide towards number one, right, it's going to push the crown up towards that side. And as I slide towards number two, so the second curve picked, it's going to slide my crown towards that side. Now this allows you to make a lot of in interesting shape changes. The crown doesn't have to be at both ends. It doesn't have to be an arc. It doesn't have to be crowned only in the middle we can push that crown left and right. And the reason why we do this with these tools, um, we can always program to solve known problems. That's easy, right? Someone gives us a problem statement, we write some code. Well, that part's not that easy, but we write some code and come up with a solution to that problem. But we're really starting to focus um, our, our efforts and some of our thinking to making the tools solve problems that are not known design problems. So we're designing tools that allow users the flexibility to solve the problems that they're going to run into. Because if we only solve the known problems, we can't help you with your design. We need to be able to allow users to solve unknown problems. And that's why we keep adding sophistication to these tools so that as you run into more problems as you, as you model and design things, you'll have the flexibility in the software to support that. So I hope you enjoy those changes and um, thanks for watching.